All right, so I want to try a little experiment, if that's okay, for my first question. I know it's blindsiding you guys right away. What we want to do is we want to be able to pitch Vancouver as the place for someone to start or relocate their game studio. So we want to kind of build this pitch. So I figure we're going to start with one of you and see if we can kind of build on that. But we really want to talk about the business models, the talent, everything around what you think really makes for a great pitch for someone coming here. So why don't we start in the middle Okay. With Justin. You didn't think you were going to get picked because you were in the middle, no. did you? Uh, no. That's what happened. Well, I think what, what I believe uh, matters most to me is just the broad range and the variety of what, what Vancouver has to offer. You have your, your AAA, big budget, big, big team games, uh, making games for console and PC. You also have the, the smaller studios make PC game or mobile games, whether they're free to play or freemium. And you also have a bunch of studios experimenting with new technology. And that's where you get that breadth. And these new technology uh, avenues represent new platforms, whether it's VR or AR, I know those are buzzwords, but these things are coming. And if you want to be involved or have access to any of those, this is the place to be because you can find someone playing with it somewhere uh, and coming up with new, new experiences. We've got a commu established community right now. That's the short way of saying inside, it, yeah, yeah. Right, which is yeah. attractive. Totally. Uh, John, would you like to add to the pitch? Sure. Um, so uh, we also have um, uh, a lot of um, positive connections um, with the decision makers in the, in the province. Uh, so uh, Bill's here from uh, BCTIA. I sit on the BCTIA board. There's also the uh, DigiBC board. So DigiBC represents uh, video games, visual effects, and digital animation. So the creative technologies cluster. Um, and we are regularly, uh, through DigiBC, talking to the government about what it's going to take to continue to make this the best place uh, to build video games on the planet. Um, and that ranges everywhere from uh, help from a financial standpoint to help with education, uh, with immigration. Um, and I really feel like here we have a provincial government um, that understands our industry and uh, wants to be there to support us. So uh, I think it was already mentioned, um, we introduced the Interactive Digital Media Tax Credit here, uh, gosh, probably six or seven years ago now, which is a 17.5% refundable credit on all of your uh, development labor. Um, we, are, we recently successfully lobbied to have that extended. Um, so that's now in effect through 2020, uh, which is fantastic. Um, and we are talking to the government right now about how we can help the BC Tech strategy. So back in January, um, the province announced that tech was going to be one of the central pillars um, of our province's economy going forward. And as part of that, there was an initiative announced um, that every kid in the province was going to have the opportunity to learn to code from grades uh, K through 12. Um, and so our industry has taken it upon ourselves. Since we have natural curb appeal to the youth um, who perhaps have a future in a tech career, um, the video game subsector of tech is, one would argue, the most interesting to many kids. Um, so we've been working with the government on how we can help uh, put that um, in play and help ha use our industry as a way to attract more talent into tech. And ultimately, what we're interested in is the talent that comes out the other end and graduates from BC universities and can be used uh, to help us make even better products here. So there's just a couple of examples. I'm sure Josh can add to that. Yeah, I think uh, what we have is uh, uh, all these great groups that you can share and learn information from. So uh, I co-chair the Gaming Sea Council with BC Tech, and we just get together. Um, we just had a retreat and we get together and share real numbers, real information. And I think that's unlike a lot of other gaming clusters in the world. In fact, the only place I've really seen that level of sharing has been Finland. And uh, fuck Finland, we're way better in Finland. <laughs> um, so I think that is one of the things, because you could really meet with people from, from the gaming uh, sector and just ask real, uh, uh, real numbers. So we just had a meeting with the community groups we got. Uh, 12 different studios out and looked at real numbers from all of um, community needs, real metrics, and kind of had the black box discussion of you could talk about it and you, nothing can leave the room. And there's lots of that that happens in Vancouver. So I think that's, that's really unique. Okay, well, so we've got community, more community. We have financial structure. I think there's other things like uh, there's federal grants like SHRED, 
right? There's Creative BC for funding and other ones as well. Um, the one thing I actually want to play off is something you said about your company, Josh, which is you have 95% of your staff are from BC. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. yeah, 90%. Yeah. 90%? Yeah. So I guess yeah, how, if I want to move my company to BC, how, how, what kind of a talent base is there here for me to be able to recruit from? There's uh, 5,500 people um, in the interactive entertainment subsector within the, uh, within the province. Um, and uh, we move around. I don't move around, but we move around. <laughs> um, so a lot of the companies in uh, BC, um, in fact, Justin used to work at EA. Uh, Josh didn't work at EA, but I found out his wife did. A um, lot, of, lot of folks have, have come from EA and they've set up other companies and they've grown those companies, uh, not just in the interactive entertainment space, but in the, the tech space at large. Um, and as Josh was alluding to as well, we help each other out. Um, so it's not like we're the kingpin sitting up on the hill in Burnaby and uh, we never speak to any of the other studios. Um, we get together regularly through DigiBC, through BCTIA. Um, and uh, you know, we've, we're all actively interested in maintaining and growing a critical mass of talent because the, the bigger the industry cluster is, um, the better we will all be as individual companies. Let, let me do one challenge on that. Have you guys seen yeah. the Dawson strategy report for the ESAC? No. So the one challenge that it says exists in the industry is the lack of highly skilled domestic talent, right? Now it's looking across Canada, and what I'm wondering is, you know, if that were the case, what can we be doing to increase that amount of ta domestic talent? There's the other side of it, which is attracting talent mm -hmm. from other countries as well. But let's start with domestic first. What, what kind of things could we do, uh, Justin? Well, I think it, it's a combination of things. I mean, on the one hand, we do need to cooperate more. And, and John's right. The fact that the three of us know each other is a sign that you know, we don't, we're not isolated. We're not in silos. So we do cooperate. Uh, our role is to make games that are so incredibly appealing that we're drawing that creative talent to the province, to Vancouver, to contribute to building the sequels and the new titles that we're putting out. Uh, but we also have to think a bit longer term. And so a lot of what we do is really about, and often is really about you know, the short term because that's where a lot of the challenges come from. But we have the luxury now in Vancouver to start thinking a little bit longer term, be more strategic about how we're building uh, the next generation of, of developers that we want to bring or, or grow here starting in, in Vancouver. So um, an increased participation with local schools, it, it's starting. I don't think we're doing a great job to be honest. And I think I'm certainly guilty of that, but we need to carve out time to do a better job of that because that's really where if we believe we can grow that here in a homegrown sense, we, we have to start with influencing 10, 15 years ahead of time. I, I don't really like thinking about the fact that I'll be working in 15 years, but assuming I am, I'll want to have access to talent then too. Right, right. Yeah. Josh, did you want to add that? Yeah, I think we just need to copy what's happening in the startup world. Like, um, we should just copy what, um, you know, I just came back from Traction last week and it was phenomenal and it was you know, everyone just hustling and some big anchor tenants there. I mean, Slack and Hootsuite, Mobify, they're finding talent. There's no reason why we can't do that for games. We just need to copy their model. I mean, the startup scene in Vancouver is really, really strong. We're good. We have to catch up as the game scene. And I think we're, a lot of different people are working hard to do that, but um, they've already laid out the model. We just have to follow it and it, it'll come. And certainly talking about it from the, the academic side, you know, the, the Center for Digital Media, and here I go with a plug, you know, was founded in cooperation with a lot of the game studios in trying to create something that actually prepared, in this case, graduate students and train them to be able to enter into the workforce. But we're seeing many universities now and institutions set up game programs and game development programs. And we're starting to see some of that in high schools as well, where schools like Argyle have a, a digital media academy. Uh, that actually participates quite a bit with industry as well. So I think that kind of stuff is happening because of the partnerships between industry and academia. And I certainly would like to see more of that as well. So yeah. that's an invitation, by the way. <laughs> well, I, I, I think um, Justin kind of hit the nail on the head, which is um, creating the, the, the next generation of homegrown talent and, and really growing the talent base within BC with British Columbians is slightly more of a long game right now because, I mean, we've only really just started on that with um, the commitments that the government have just made. And as I mentioned, we're working with them to figure out how we can help do that. But the other side of this is when we can't find the right talent locally, um, we are able to bring people into BC, into Canada um, fairly easily. Um, there are some uh, speed bumps that we've encountered. You just, we, you, know, you go ahead and jump in, by me, the way. Don't wait for me. Let, 
<laughs> Let me just finish. <laughs> I need my people to hitch, they need to get on the same plane that your people are going right. on and kind of sneak in, but so, so it's not fairly easy for us. It's okay, so at EA, one of, the, one of the benefits we have is we actually have people whose job it is to focus on bringing people through immigration, right? Obviously, at a smaller company, you, you know, may you not, too. you do, it's okay. Just, uh, there's a lot of, it, that's one of the biggest challenges, I think, about, about having a game studio in Vancouver is bringing the extremely senior talent, people from abroad and it's you know you forget one small detail and it's back down I mean everyone yeah, has a horror story about where, it where I was gonna go with this is so we, we have been bringing up the issues and I feel like in the last 12 months the provincial government and the federal government have been listening and it feels like we have been, been making inroads and we have um, a government structure that actually is making the effort to understand the problems and is willing to fix them um, so I you know Yes, it's not all roses, but I do feel like we're on the right path. It's a challenge, I'll be honest. And I think uh, we are, it's not just about bringing people to Vancouver, it's bringing people back to Vancouver. A lot of people left uh, the industry here uh, uh, years ago. And so really getting those people who believe in Vancouver, believe in the studios that are here to come back, is, is a, even that's a challenge if they're not from, from Canada originally. So uh, recruiting remains one of our, our primary uh, tough spots, tough challenges to solve. Um, but I think, again, it's a long game. So we, we have to take a little bit of short-term pain, uh, get through it, but start to uh, tackle all these different options, whether it's legislation or just an attitude from the government that's a little more open and then growing the future generation. Anyone here from the government? <laughs> All right. Uh, if you need a pen for notes, so you got it. Okay. That's awesome. That's great. Put away the pad. Yeah. yeah. Getting into that as well, the one thing that, you know, someone mentioned, look how, how beautiful it is and it's like this year round. Um, <laughs> for, for people that are not from here, just let's keep that illusion of going. Um, you know, what is it about the place, the location, the geography, the things we can do that is also a great pitch selling point? for bringing a studio here. Uh, we'll start with Josh's time on the, other, on the other end there. So Bo said it's just like the attitude, right? So you, you, people here work really hard, but they also do a lot of other stuff outside. You're either snowboarding or you're heading to Whistler, or you're going to the island or you're doing something. You don't really say um, what defines me is the job I do. You do a lot of other stuff, but I think that's part of the culture that, that's one of our biggest, uh, things we can offer to move to Vancouver, but it's also one of the biggest challenges too. I strongly believe the studios that moved here and they didn't work out, a big factor of that was that the local leadership did not live here. So we're also the type of city that if you don't live here, um, I, it's really hard for your studio to make it. If, you're, if your leadership lives elsewhere and comes here, like remember when uh, the Canucks coach lived in like, um, point. Yeah, yeah, he, and he drove every day. The moment that I saw that, I'm like, oh, he's totally getting fired because people just won't stand for it. It's like, why won't you live here? What's wrong with you? So if you don't live here, it's not gonna work out. Um, but if you live here, it's, it's, it's unlike any other city in the world um, that it's a unique blend of hustling and working really hard, um, but also enjoying your, you know, an hour or two hours away from snowboarding, surfing, lying on the beach, doing, watching whales, doing whatever you want to do. Yeah, I, I think it speaks to something that's been a challenge in our industry, which is work-life balance. I mean, we're, the industry's known for long hours, it's known for crunch, and I think work-life balance got a bit of a bad rap because it became equated with working restricted hours and not like just sort of nine to five, and the reality is we're in a creative industry, mm -hmm. and that creativity takes time and it takes passion. So. I don't want to be part of an organization or, or run an organization where that creativity is contained. I want it to be allowed to be free and devote the time that it needs, but I don't want people to burn out. So work-life balance for me means when you're working, you're working, you're devoted, you're, you're passionate, you're engaged, but when you're not, you're not. You're gone. You're gone to do something else that you believe in as well. So you're just as engaged, just as passionate about snowboarding or doing the grouse grind or brewing beer if you're if you're actually a Vancouverite that's what you do um, and and those things yes, matter beer. just as much and it's not about a day-to-day -day work life balance it's just I don't know what sort of time skill you want to use for me it's a little bit longer than that some some months are busier than others but really if you think about that if you think about the potential for having the ability to contribute at a very high level to very creative projects but also when the time's right, have the access to, to all that Vancouver has to offer. What a, what a fantastic place, and I think it's unmatched in that regard. Actually, I was going to continue with you, but actually I do want to change it up for one last 
question, if that's all right. We have a little bit of time. Uh, I realize I've been taking time away from you guys talking, but we can always talk after this, of course, and mingle. Um, I do want to get to part of the pitch now where we talk about what are we, you know, what is the trends? What are our trends? Where do we see Vancouver's gaming industry going? The thing that you've touched upon already in some of your initial intros, the things that are really going to get people excited, the new things we're doing, where we might be leading. John, do you want to talk about that? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, well, from um, an industry perspective, so uh, the video games industry is $85 billion roughly uh, globally each year. Um, uh, basically, there's three uh, major subsectors: so console gaming, PC free-to-play gaming, and mobile gaming. And mobile is still exploding, uh, double-digit growth so far this year. Um, and we have a very strong cluster of uh, mobile video game companies uh, here in in Vancouver. Um, so I certainly think that's an area that we will continue to uh, to, to grow in. And I see that as a, a huge opportunity. Of course, we also have a very strong heritage in console gaming as well. Uh, console and PC gaming, I should say HD gaming, right? Um, companies like EA and, and, and Relic and Capcom, 4K gaming, there we go, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think uh, the console gaming as well uh, represents another potential avenue for further growth. Uh, Xbox just announced uh, their new uh, Xbox Slim and then the Xbox Scorpio, PlayStation um, doing some stuff as well. Um, lots happening in the console space. Lastly, a, a little known fact um, at EA is we also run our um, Asia business um, out of the Burnaby office. Um, so uh, FIFA Online is a massive uh, game out in um, Korea, Southeast Asia, and the last 12 months has been a huge success for us in China. And that entire business is run out of our Burnaby office, and we see that as another area uh, for huge potential growth. As, um, <clears throat> those populations continue to expand and gaming becomes more and more a, a part of the lifestyle there. So, Yeah, I, mean, I think you, you covered a lot of the points there. I think for us, specifically at Relic, what we see is um, as, as people you know, have a broader range of devices and we're better able with the power of those devices to sort of integrate all those experiences. So it's not just about sitting by yourself in front of your, your desk at night playing a PC game. It's about you sitting by yourself in front of, on your couch in front of your TV playing a console game, but also sharing those experiences with games. I think we've all, we all understand the depth um, and the richness of the social interactions and the community interactions that occur within games, that, that's going to expand. Uh, and we also uh, believe that our reach at Relic is very focused on North America and, and Europe. We see that growing to, to Asia as well uh, in terms of better understanding of what, what games appeal and how that experience needs to speak to a different market. And uh, we, we just know the numbers in Asia and are definitely focused on that. Josh? Yeah, I think it's definitely... Um uh, mobile games, definitely most st the studios uh, here are going to be growing mobile games. Studios moving in are going to be looking at that. Indie games are big, um, especially on Steam and new platforms. VR, AR is going to be pretty big. Um, uh, idle games, they're going to be huge, like Eric's big idle game that's coming out. Um, but, uh, you know, another big cluster, too, is all of the other businesses that this touches. So it's all of uh, the ad tech, all of the, the uh, white labeled analytics solutions, all that. There's a lot of people here that work on that that are even here tonight. And all of those are gonna help us grow because they're businesses that are homegrown. We can work with the local startup scene, eat each other's dog food, grow together. And uh, I think you're gonna see, you know, uh, spin off of more, you know, uh, different companies that power games, the technologies behind them, really grow big. I know I, I uh, visited Victoria, and Victoria has a huge gaming cluster, but a lot of it is the technologies that support the games, and, and, uh, and that's growing at an explosive rate. So that's going to be big. Yeah, and certainly I want to just add a bit more about the whole idea of VR and AR, because we're seeing more companies in Archeat, Cloudhead, Sawmill, uh, Roadhouse as well, getting more into that space and starting to try and look at how they can lead that space going forward because there's so much ground that has not been tread yet there and it's great to see that happening here. We had the consumer VR uh, conference here as well uh, not so long ago, which is the first consumer VR conference internationally. So I'm seeing more of that happen. I'm afraid, you know, we, we've really just touched the service on a pitch. I do hope that for those of you that are here in BC, this makes you feel so much better again about why you're here. Right? And if you are not, why you should be here. I would like to really thank our panelists, John Lutz, Justin Dowdswell, and Josh Nilsson. Uh, I do want to thank Bill and uh, uh, Pawu as well. And thank you for all of you as well. And now we mingle. <laughs>